Well, Alberta is posting uh, record uh, COVID infection numbers for the last week or 10 days. And uh, here at Energy Media, we have interviewed a number of folks in the healthcare system that are dealing on the front lines of, of uh, the COVID battle, including uh, many doctors. Uh, and we're talking to nurses. We've interviewed Mike Parker, about uh, who's the head of the uh, union that represents support workers. And the message is clear. Everybody's exhausted. The system is stretched thin. And they're worried that if the next wave of hospital admissions hits, uh, they're going to be in big trouble. So to get the big picture on workers in the healthcare system, we're going to talk to Gil McGowan of the Alberta Federation of Labor. So welcome to the interview, Gil. Hi, Markham. Well, I, I think I laid out the crisis pretty well. Uh, the, the, the system, the healthcare system is uh, creaking and groaning under the weight of the pandemic. What are your members uh, telling you? Well, I think it's important to uh, start by saying that the system, our healthcare system was creaking and groaning even before the pandemic, uh, and that uh, we're actually still struggling under the legacy of uh, the cuts from the so-called Klein revolution in the 90s. Um, I'm not sure that Albertans fully understand uh, how deep those cuts and how uh, little ground re we made in recovering from them. Um, and, and, and the result is that, uh, you know, for the last 20 years, we have had a system that is essentially a just-in-time healthcare system, that, and it was designed that way um, by successive conservative governments. Uh, they basically had the bare minimum of beds in our hospitals, uh, you know, to cover uh, just day-to-day uh, healthcare needs. Um, and just to put some numbers on it so, so people can get their heads around it, it used to be that we had about um, between seven and 10 beds per, per 100,000 um, in our acute care hospitals here in Alberta. That, at, that, at the time, which was the 90s, that was about the average in most advanced um, uh, countries like you know, the United States, uh, Western Europe. Um, and and as, as it stands right now, the World Health Organization says you should have five beds per 100,000 residents. We, you know, going into this crisis, you know how many beds we had <laughs> per 100,000 in Alberta? We had two, two. So we were far below uh, already, even before this crisis happened, we were far below uh, the, uh, the recommended level of, uh, you know, beds in, in the country. And you know, and so, you know, it, like it was a system that was not just creaking and groaning, it was overwhelmed, uh, even before the pandemic hit. And, uh, and so, the, you know, so when, when the first wave hit, uh, luckily, uh, it, you know, it didn't generate, uh, you know, there were, you know, because of, because we had a lockdown, because uh, they kept kids home from school, um, because, uh, you know, at least in that first wave, the Kenny government was listening uh, to the advice from public health authorities. Uh, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Um, but, but now that the second wave is here, uh, arguably partly because the Kennedy government stopped listening to public health uh, officials and their advice, uh, the second wave is much worse than the first wave. We have uh, many, many more people in hospital and uh, all expectations is it's just going to get worse um, before it gets better. Uh, so the system was on the edge even before the pandemic. We struggled through the first wave and now that the second wave has hit, you know, uh, we're completely overwhelmed. I mean, the, the contact tracing system got overwhelmed first. Uh, our hospitals are in the process of being overwhelmed right now. Okay, one of the things that we've been told uh, by just about everybody we've interviewed is that, you know, it's not just the volume, it's the fact that it's been going on for 10 months. I mean, yeah. you know, it's really taken its toll physically and emotionally on, uh, on uh, healthcare workers. I mean, doctors talk about, you know, what it's like to uh, help, help, help someone who can, who's dying, you know, they have to, you know, holding up the phone uh, on a FaceTime call to their loved ones as they say goodbye, th those sorts of things. And so uh, what other kinds of messages about long-term exhaustion and, and fatigue are you hearing from your members? Yeah, yeah, so for, for your listeners, the Federation of Labor, you know, which is the organization that I'm uh, the president of, we represent most unions in the province in both the public and private sector. And, and so we have unions who represent nurses, um, you know, healthcare technologists, uh, frontline healthcare workers, and they're all telling us the same, uh, they're all sharing the same kind of stories. 
their, their, their stories of um, anxiety, uh, their stories of exhaustion, their stories of people being overwhelmed by the work, but also the, there's an emotional toll. Um, you know, and I, you know, I can say my, my, my partner is a nurse uh, working at the University Hospital here in Alberta. And, um, you know, uh, you know, the, not every, what, what she tells me is that she and her, uh, her uh, colleagues um, are, are feeling the strain. Um, you know, that's especially true for those who are working, you know, in the wards with COVID patients. Um, but it's throughout the system, like, you know, like, um, you know, as I mentioned at the outset, hospitals and our major centers in um, Alberta were already working at um, literally 100% capacity before the crisis started. Now they're at 120, 130%. And what that means is that, um, you know, people are, they're, they're working over time. They're, um, you know, and, and, and the, the other thing that, that you have to keep in mind is not only is there, um, you know, the, the demands of work, but there are also, um, you know, concerns related to uh, mental health. I mean, it's been eight months now, and uh, now we're in a second wave that's worse than the first. So people aren't only, you know, healthcare workers not only worried about providing the care uh, for their patients, which is always first and foremost, but they're also worried about getting the virus themselves uh, in an environment which is increasingly dangerous in terms of workplace hazards. Uh, and they're worried about bringing the virus home to their families. Um, you know, we, we, we know that, uh, you know, there are a lot of healthcare workers in this province who have already been exposed. Uh, the, 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 there's a disproportionate number who be, who've become COVID positive from working in healthcare settings. Um, and uh, even though they're taking all the precautions and, and so far, you know, fingers crossed, there isn't a problem with uh, things like PPE, but, uh, but people are worried that we could get to the point where our healthcare system starts to look like, um, you know, hospitals in Italy and uh, New York during um, during the crisis in the first wave, and that's that's what I'm hearing from people. They're they're afraid that we're on the path to becoming uh, another Italy or another New York. Well, thank you very much. Uh, really, really, really appreciate this. Uh, I think we're all, uh, uh, you know, hoping that the vaccine will uh, show up sooner rather than later. And frankly, I think the Kenny government is, 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 has rolled the dice on it showing up sooner rather than later to solve this problem. And, you know, boy, Alberta's in trouble if it doesn't. So thank you very much for this. Okay, thanks, Marco.